You know, we're living through very momentous and turbulent times. I mean, no one could have imagined just a year ago what 2020 would bring and now 2021. Turbulence is a good word. Upheaval is a word. Disruptions. So let's talk about that. How disruptions lead to a new world order. I'd like to share with you a perspective that we don't really hear very often these days. I myself have been trained, and I'd like to share with you a formula of how to look at events from a different vantage point. The fact of the matter is, as we live through time and space, each of us is experiencing what we see in the here and the now. Yes, we read about history, we try to imagine what the future would be like, but we live in the present. And especially when things rattle us or affect us emotionally, it's very difficult to pick ourselves up and look at the bird's eye view. Because we're right now consumed with the moment. And at times that's very vital. Because if you're dealing with a crisis or a situation you need to, you need to address immediately, you can't just begin to pontificate and look at the big picture. You have to deal with the events on the ground in the immediate situation. However, even then, and at all times, there's another perspective which I'd like to share with you, and that is called the bird's eye view, a broader perspective. Not only does it somewhat free us from the emotional tensions that are elicited from immediate events, it also actually gives us perspective, context. So even though there are events and experiences that right now are affecting us very directly, let's begin with COVID-19. Include now the political unrest, post-pre-election, post-election, now the uprisings or whatever you want to call it in Washington, what will happen this week of their inauguration, there are a lot of tensions are flaring. And it affects us, especially if you follow the media. So there's one way to write the headline of these events, the unrest, the upheaval, the polarization, radical left, radical right, what will be. Trump, of course, was a major lightning rod and continues to be that elicited all kinds of feelings, either anti-Trump, pro-Trump, in between. But there's another way to write the headline of these events. In 10 years from now, even in five years from now, 20 years from now, I think about it. As we look back at 2020, 2021, and I'll take it even broader, as we look back at the beginning of the 21st century, what will be the headline? It won't be driven by the drama of the moment, the emotions, because that's all driven, as I said, by the immediate events. And especially when you go into special interests and everyone has their own agenda, the media, the media and others, it all is amplified and blown out of proportion at times. What will be the headline? The headline will be disruption in the beginning of the 21st century disrupted an old world order and is leading or has led us into a new world order. I have no doubt that will be the headline. It's not a prediction or a prophecy. It's a student of history. We all are students of history and look at the big picture, that's what you come away with. Amazon disrupted the retail world. The internet disrupted many of the commercial models of the past. Communi new modern communications, online communications disrupted how we run business, how we run our office meetings. Mr. Donald Trump disrupted Washington, the political systems. Whether you agree or disagree with him, the Democratic Party disrupted the Republican Party. You find a common denominator when you step back. And though I don't want to compare it because the events back to 100 years ago in 1920, 1921, 
the beginning of the 20th century, were also tremendous disruptions. There we have over 120 million people killed in the world wars. But if you think about it, the beginning of the 20th century, monarchs still ruled. The Tsar, Tsarist Russia, the Ottoman Empire. Little did we know what was coming. Yes, if you look back, you could see the trends were changing, the, wa the waves and the winds, new winds were blowing. But then came the Russian Revolution, World War I, World War II. And after World War II, such devastation, what happened? A new world order was born. The prosperity, even the comforts that followed World War II, unprecedented. It's a century that will forever be remembered as the bloodiest century, but also the one with the greatest measure of hope and growth. The 21st century is going through its own birth pangs, especially in the beginning of the century. We all remember 9-11, just the first year in the 21st century, 2001, 9-11. And then the internet, which was born already in the end of the 20th century, 1995, 1994, accelerated, and look what it has done. Not all negative, frankly. It changed the music industry. If you may remember Napster, music, digital music, changed the world's way of dealing with music. Changing the publishing industry. How many industries it has uprooted. But old orders don't die easily. It doesn't just go smoothly. There's always going to be a clash, a tension, for financial reasons, for control reasons, for just comfort zone reasons. And then... In the last years, when President Trump was elected four years ago, a major disruption. Again, not relevant here, positive or negative. And now in 2020, when, the, when COVID-19, the pandemic broke, approximately almost a year ago, going back to March, I mean, it began back in November, they say, November, that's why it's called COVID-19, November 19, but when it really impacted most of us around March, has created another upheaval. And then the upheavals of the last few months. And I reiterate again, I'm not getting into politics or taking sides. I'm not even going there. I'm looking at the big picture, the end of the story. We're not even getting whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. Obviously, there have been negatives. And when you include the racial tensions that began with the murder of George Floyd and what that caused, and it's still causing. So there's a lot of simmering energy and the way I've been trained to think, and I want to share that with you, we have to see this, not just as an immediate discomfort, but as a birthing. The Kabbalists and the mystics put it this way, that between two paradigms, there's always going to be a vacuum, a void. They call it, in Hebrew, yesh, ayin yesh. Yesh is a state of being. A certain paradigm, a certain structure. Ayin is that vacuum. Something has to be lost. Something is shed. You shed one layer of skin to assume a new layer. And then comes the, the new reality, the new paradigm that's born. Now, it's not always that smooth. There's a lot of tension. This is a true transition. But you show me any area of growth, any development, any birthing, always is preceded by a disruption. Because that's the definition of birthing. Something has to give in order to give birth to another thing. If not, it's just an extension. In the world of recovery, they say, if nothing changes. Indeed, nothing changes. Change, by definition, means that something has to shift. And shifting is never comfortable. So a mother goes through the birth pains of pregnancy and the, birth, the, birth, the, pang, the pains of pregnancy and then the birth pangs. All of us in our childhood, we grow into adolescence and adults. There's always going to be the awkwardness in the in-between from child to adult. A seed deteriorates in the ground before it gives birth to a sapling, to a beautiful tree that ultimately will grow out of it. Creativity is, just child, is a child of frustration. The more the creativity, the more the frustration that precedes it. Do you ever have a situation, you know, you're about to have a breakthrough, but you're always going to be preceded by confusion. Suddenly you don't know whether you're coming or going. And then something suddenly emerges. Ask any artist, 
and they'll tell you exactly the same experience. There's always going to be a disruption because an old paradigm is giving birth to a new one. So is this something we'd like? Of course we don't like the discomfort. And we've also had, unfortunately, we have had deaths. We've had losses. We had health health issues. So I'm not suggesting it's coming doesn't come with a price. But when you look that way, it creates a certain level of calm, I must say. Not that it minimizes what's going on, but it puts it in that context. So if you think of it that way, disruption, birth, it gives a entire different way of, of painting the picture of our, of our lives and our times today. And this is also true on a personal level, not just on a macrocosmic level, but on a personal level. We all go through these shifts and balances in our lives when things begin to develop. Something new is about to happen. There will be always a certain measure of anxiety, a measure of discomfort as the new emerges from the old. What is the great challenge we have? We hold on to our status quo. We hold on to the inertia with such force that we become our own enemy. Instead of flowing and recognizing that this is a journey, imagine fighting that journey. Imagine a mother is about to give birth to a child because the pain is so great she just gives up or doesn't want that pain and doesn't see it through. Imagine someone's frustrated and because they're frustrated they give up and they don't create what they need to create. That's the challenge because we, the past holds us in its clutches, in its tentacles. So what we need to learn is to free ourselves and have that certain measure of spontaneity, of flexibility, a certain ease. Allow yourself to experiencing something new. The more rigid you are, the more firm you are, it works against you. When change is happening, you want to be part of the change. You don't want to fight the change. Now, obviously, there are situations that we need to address if it's particularly dangerous or in any way can cause potential damage. But nevertheless, in the overall picture, go with the flow. This is what's happening. Disruption? Okay. Those that will ride with that disruption will be the first to benefit from the fruits of the new birthing. That's how it is. Those that stand strong and try to resist it can be hurt in the process. So this isn't just a philosophical another perspective. It's actually a way of looking at life differently. And I'll apply it into personal lives. If you have tensions in your own home between parents and children, between spouses, or tensions within yourself, your own struggles. So you can try to fight and be stubborn or you can say, you know what, let me be a little looser, more creative. Allow something fresh to happen. Be spontaneous. I always share with people when you go somewhere, today travel, of course, is limited, but you go somewhere, don't always stick to your plan. Be open, hang out. Be open, you may meet a person you didn't expect. The unexpected is where magic happens. But the unexpected is not according to your script. That's exactly the point. So it allows fresh air, it allows something new to enter. Imagine if you were able to assume that attitude. Now I understand why there's so much resistance to it. Besides comfort zones, there's also another issue, fear. Fear of the unknown. Now you know your situation. Even the known devil, the known evil, is better than the unknown. So why would I disrupt my known such given situation? And especially if fear drives your life, insecurity or uncertainty, why venture into new terrain precisely because the word new because that opens up new opportunities new possibilities i'm not suggesting a recklessness a type of just do everything i'm speaking about not letting yourself to become hardened and your attitudes your preconceived notions to block you from great opportunities so practically speaking even today Get online, make a new friend. Reach out to someone. Disrupt yourself in a good way. Because when you disrupt it in a good way, it may even prevent having to be disrupted in a bad way. Disrupt your life. Be a disruptor. 
in a positive fashion. Look for something new, a new perspective, a new idea, a new class, a new friend, a new commitment. As soon as you're working with other people, as soon as you have a relationship, immediately there's going to be something new because another person is not you. They may even challenge you. Don't be afraid of a challenge. One of the ways to get out of our insecurities and fears is to allow ourselves a new situation and recognize, you know what? I wasn't blown away. I wasn't annihilated or obliterated in the process. I recognize I could be challenged. I can go into an area where I thought I wasn't comfortable and come to discover something I haven't known before. So my friends, we have a tremendous opportunity today to allow ourselves not to be trapped in the moment, in the time, in the space, in the disruptions, and recognize that it's really part of a larger, greater growth. That sad analogy comes to mind. The caterpillar. Right? The caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, into its cocoon. Time passes. The metamorphosis from a caterpillar into a butterfly. So I remember once reading a book. It was a very interesting book. It was, a, it, it was like, almost like a child's book, but it had a very profound message. Does the caterpillar know that it's going to become a butterfly? The consciousness of the caterpillar, does it change? Now you could argue either way. So when the caterpillar may not be aware, as the cocoon begins to close, it may think it's dying. It's about to die. And then it becomes complete darkness. The caterpillar, which was crawling around in its own way, has now been completely ensconced in a chrysalis. Complete darkness. So the caterpillar could really feel desperate and feel this is the end. But time passes. Time passes. And the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. The day comes where the chrysalis, the cocoon, begins to open up. And now, slowly will emerge this beautiful, let's say, a monarch butterfly. And there's someone watching the cocoon opening and sees this butterfly struggling. Because remember, it takes a while till it, till it, it's like an, an egg. The egg has to crack before the chick can get out. And sees the butterfly struggling to get out. So in his divine compassion, his misplaced compassion, I should say, he goes, takes a knife, and cuts away the cocoon to allow the butterfly to emerge. Beautiful butterfly. Look at those wings, those colors. Magical, like a flower, like a flying flower. But then to his chagrin and sadness, he's waiting for the butterfly to take flight. The butterfly is on the branch and cannot fly. As much as he tries to push it and encourage it, could not fly. What did this man do? He thought he was being kind. He's letting the butterfly not need to struggle. The struggle of the butterfly in its last throes as it moves away from the cocoon, from the, from the caterpillar consciousness to a butterfly consciousness, it needs to struggle because that forces liquid into its wings that give it the aer- aerodynamics necessary to fly as opposed to a caterpillar that is always grounded. But this person has taken away that final struggle and the butterfly could never fly again. So our challenges to shape us, they define us, they turn us into great entities from being a grounded caterpillar into a soaring free spirit butterfly. So never ever think that the challenge is a negative. It could be painful, it could be uncomfortable, but it is part of the disruption, those challenges that lead to a new world order, that lead to a new consciousness, that lead to a new identity. May we all be able to step back and look at the events in our time. So when you watch the news next time, and I would in general encourage, discourage people from watching too much because it just becomes, I don't want to say entertainment, but it's just uh, very, also very depressing. But if you do hear the news and you hear some disruptions, you hear about concerns, yes, we need to be safe and we need to expect people to, to be accountable and follow law and order, but don't allow it to disturb your entire serenity. Don't let it disrupt your life. See it as disturbances that are the tremors that precede a new birthing, a new world order. And may we be blessed to actually see it through and see that birthing in our own personal lives and collectively. 
that as we look back in the future to this time, we'll see it in this context that it brought something far greater to each one of us and to all of us. Thank you so much. Simon Jacobson here. Please share, like, comment, suggest, rebut, at least some type of reaction. I'd love to have that cross-pollination interaction. Meaningfullife.com is our website where you can find a full array of resources. Every Sunday we do this live, but then it's, of course, archived and you can access it. If you like what, I, what you heard here, please pass it on. And may we all experience renewal. Be well, be blessed, and stay healthy. Thank you very much.